so we are come to the last lecture on Newtonian potential in which we eventually complete the proof of the solubility of our uh, Poisson equation so we will uh, complete that uh, using the Newtonian potential introduced let me again uh, because important so we recall the Newtonian potential Vx equal to is the so we complete it not that uh, the everything is over but then we will not do it further and in the last class we actually computed w i of x equal to dv by dx and there is no need of uh, any additional assumption you will see the difficulty here this is nothing but uh, dv by dx i of x minus y f of y d now the delicate issue is this today's lecture delicate issue issue to compute because you want to solve the problem you have to compute d square v by dx i dx rather you want to compute your laplace and so at this uh, point we want to tell something that uh, the there is some mistake in the the proof given in our book so we will be giving the correct proof here so there are some uh, points which we have not exactly noticed it so that also indicates how delicate this proof if we are not uh, worried about that one so the proof is delicate so we will uh, compute this uh, using the elder continuity so in this direction in this direction we will state the theorem now so introduce no before introduce uh, yeah in this direction let omega tilde be a bigger domain containing omega maybe you are fully contained in omega uh, you can take it if you want it such that uh, omega tilde is smooth so that omega tilde is smooth enough I'm not specifying what smoothness it is so that divergence theorem is valid you know that C1 or whatever smooth Di uh, divergence theorem divergence. any domain theorem is valid that's the material theorem is valid for example you can take uh, for example so that's why it's a kind of a little delicate the boundary thing you can take uh, omega tilde is equal to a ball of radius r uh, with r uh, containing omega that is r is large you can choose uh, because omega is a bounded domain r large you can do that one so now introduce a class of functions introduce for i j equal to 1 to n so we are going to compute what is d square v by d thing and define uh, for uh, introduce for x in omega so you are define x is in omega some u i j of x for i equal to so this is the thing and this is in omega tilde i'm defining d square v by you will see why you need this xi xj but then uh, at a value at x minus y and f of y minus f of x this is the internal thing and we also need to take care of the boundary so you will have one more term f of x equal to f of x is so, a okay f of x uh, what, is, what is the term you exactly wanted on the boundary of omega tilde this is in omega tilde yes this is to take care of the boundary d v by uh, 
dp by uh, dxi at x minus y nu j f y this is the outer normal this is the boundary d sigma y this uh, nu is equal to outward unit normal nu m outward unit normal outward unit normal is a standard notation for us so now look at the terms here is well defined why it is well defined this there is no problem well defined because it's on the boundary at the singularity is only at x equal to y which you will and this is locally integrable d phi by dxi here this is not locally integrable but you have yesterday's remark yeah this is well is well defined is uh, well defined that we already made the comments yesterday defined because f is uh, held continuous so the singularity is so there is a lack of so there is a lack of uh, uh, local integrability here but that is taken care of by this uh, uh, held continuous so yesterday we have seen that okay so helder continuous of course f is bounded out so look at the first term anyway first term yeah so what is f outside omega so here extend f by zero outside omega outside um, a zero in omega tilde yeah no, that, zero in yeah zero in omega tilde minus omega that is a zero outside omega yeah. and we use the same notation so we don't use any other notation we use the same notation f same notation f so if you look at the first integral in the first integral this first term outside omega uh, it is zero of course x is fixed which is in omega so the first term is actually no, uh, in omega it's not in omega till uh, so the important term is actually in omega only the remaining term is in omega tilde and then that is something like omega tilde uh, uh, omega tilde and this is also a term in d omega tilde so these are all will uh, the kind of finer analysis which you need an extended domain to do this uh, finer analysis so that's it so, so f is so you have an omega here and then you can have a omega it can be a ball a big ball so you define omega f equal to zero here. F is given here. Okay. So you do that one. So I call this uh, okay. Okay. So uh, look here. So this is a, a definition of uij. So you keep that in uij. As I said, you have to be a bit careful in defining everything. This I call it star if you want it. So that definition of UH. So now I will state my theorem, main theorem. Okay. Theorem. So let me do it. Again. Theorem. So definition. Let F be bounded. Whatever we have assumed, I am putting it in form of a theorem. Helder continuous of order alpha. Helder continuous of order alpha is zero uh, less than alpha. In fact, you can up to one. And V be the Newtonian potential. V be the Newtonian potential. So this is essentially the final theorem. Though we state a final theorem which is in a Newtonian potential, 
defined earlier okay then what we are telling is that this is what we are going to prove it then v is in c2 of omega and satisfies minus laplace in v equal to f so of course we don't uh, see, derive any boundary condition but we use this to prove the boundary of any problem soon you will see that one in fact we have more you can compute every derivative in fact for any x in omega you can actually get your d square v but then after that it's a summing d square v by dxi dxj is equal to uij where uij defined earlier so you see okay. so let me give you the proof as i told you there is some mistakes in the uh, proof of this book uh, uh, proof of this theorem uh, given in the uh, so let me so let me recall v so i will not write again recall v and then you recall dv i dv by dxi which we already computed and given a notation this is a standard notation okay so so we uh, regularize so you see what we want to do is that we want to for compute d square v by dxi dxj so in other words we want to compute dwi by uh, dwi by dxj which needs a further regularization and then so this is only dv by dxi you didn't need any the helder continuity but here you need regularization and the trick we have employed that one in any case you regularize w i epsilon i x as let epsilon positive small we choose small small okay so we regularize it this w i epsilon of x i epsilon of x is equal to integral over omega so it's the same thing d phi by dx i and then you have multiplied of x minus y so you and you re recall h epsilon h epsilon of x minus y and f of y d so you see this h epsilon is equal to zero for x minus y less than so recall this property h epsilon of x minus y is equal to zero for mod x minus y so less than or equal to epsilon that is where you have a trouble when you so you want to take a differentiation inside then you will get d square phi by dx and dxj and then it has a lock not locally integrable but then uh, this is anyway zero so you regularize that one and equal to one for x minus y greater than or equal to two epsilon and it is smooth so it is one eventually the integral will be only less than or equal to 2 epsilon epsilon less than or equal to mod x minus y less than or equal to 2 epsilon so this is what okay so now uh, this is a w i epsilon is because uh, there is no problem here you see so this is uh, uh, so you can take differentiation because of h epsilon vanishes there is no problem of singularity uh, inside therefore that implies uh, your w i epsilon is actually by uh, by regularizing this one the singularity is removed wherever the singularity is there it's completely removed so, so basically this is an integration this is basically an integration over omega intersection mod x minus y greater than or equal to epsilon you see so there is no singularity this implies w a epsilon is c1 of omega and you can see that d w i epsilon by dx j i can differentiate now this is integral over omega and d by dx i i can take this dx j inside of d by d v by dx i 
of x minus y h is also depends on thing h epsilon of x minus y you see into f of y dy so you can do that now look at this one f is 0 outside omega so this is same as integral over omega tilde this integral there is no problem because f is 0 there. so now we will add and subtract a term that's a very important thing so this is equal to because i want to uh, take care of my uh, you will see that why i do that one so i will do the same thing d by dx j of d phi by dx i of x minus y because i want to use my elder continuity h epsilon of x minus y and i will add so this dx j is not for f okay and here i will add f of y minus f of x i add a term here the differentiation is with respect to y this so i add the uh, minus that one subtractor so i have to add plus f of x here integral over okay omega tilde this is everything in omega tilde of d by dx j of d phi by dx i x minus y h epsilon of x minus y dy so you see this integration is with respect to that one so uh, look at this one so this is integral is i let me call it i1 plus i2 now look at i2 do an integration by parts there is no issue at all when you do an integration by parts this is multiplied by one you see so that will go so only boundary term will come so by divergence theorem because it's a divergence theorem theorem i2 is equal to minus f of x the only boundary term will come the in because it's a full uh, it's an exact differential here so the boundary term is equal to d phi by dx i okay of x minus y h epsilon of x minus y ah this is on the boundary of omega delta so this is and h epsilon will be one because it's a far away so if you look at it here so if epsilon is small thing h x is inside so you have an omega here and i am choosing omega tilde in such a way that and your h epsilon the points will be here so you are uh, uh, you are having one so uh, it will become one there so the boundary term it will not be coming that will be, take one there okay so you can uh, have your boundary so the boundary is far away from this so you can uh, this one so you can say that uh, for example you can say the distance from omega to the boundary of omega tilde is probably you can strictly greater than epsilon so the points here so if you take x here so the y here x here will be distance will be greater than equal to epsilon on uh, in fact you can take two epsilon if you want so in that case this will become one okay so h epsilon will become one so this will be nu j of y so this is okay nu j of y and d sigma y you is that clear because you are integrating here on the boundary and the boundary of d omega that's where you want a different omega tilde you see the boundary term and you can have the points from here basically more than two epsilon that's something you can take the point you like it so bigger than that one so you have uh, you are uh, one here and you have now look at this term this term is exactly what is defined the boundary term in your u if you go that it. 
So this term is same as this term. See, that's exact boundary term which we looked there. So the both are same. So if I compute because I usually want to know that your duj is d square u by d square v by, that's what you want to do it. So you exactly want to because this is the limit you are looking at it. So this is the exactly so you want to compute this is what uh, d epsilon by dxj. So you want to study the limit of dwi by dxj and that should be your d square v by dxi dxj. So if I subtract so therefore okay so therefore if I do that one so you exactly you got that second term to be like that so if I subtract my uij eventually I want to understand this convergence dw i epsilon by dxj these boundary terms will get cancelled and look at here in this term you just do the subtraction and h epsilon is 1 whenever mod x minus y is there so if there is no h epsilon this is exactly this term in here so you will see the terms are constructed when h, this term is the same as now if you look at this term this is same as which h epsilon and h epsilon is equal to 1 with mod x minus y greater than or equal to 2 epsilon. So you exactly mod x minus y greater than or equal to 2 epsilon. So it will cancel. So only you will get x integration x minus y greater than or equal to 2 epsilon. Okay. And d by dxj. So you are subtracting same term only mod x sorry less than or equal to 2 epsilon because for greater than or equal to 2 epsilon h epsilon equal to 1 the uh, term contributed for uij and dwi w, epsilon by dxj are the same so it get cancelled so you only get h epsilon contribution on this interval 1 minus h epsilon h epsilon i used up so you use that of x minus y you see d phi by dxi of x minus y yeah so this integration is also here into f of y minus f of x now we are done almost your proof is here almost the uh, proof is done here if you look at it so do an estimate so a little exercise little exercise this we have done it in the previous theorem but you can do the same thing if i do this exercise uh, you use the uh, what do you say held a continuity and uh, estimates on the uh, use estimates on the fundamental solution use estimates on the fundamental solution if you do that one i'll get my uij of x dwi by epsilon by dxj at x will be less than or equal to look at this differentiation so you have to first differentiate this bracket should be like this First, you have to differentiate this one. When you differentiate this h epsilon, you know that it is bounded by a over epsilon, which we have used in that case. So you will get, uh, when you differentiate this here, so what you will get is uh, maybe some constant, uh, maybe coming here, but that's not important. You will have 2 epsilon. So integration is over here. On two layer. So the first term, when you differentiate this one, that will bring some a over epsilon because it thing and that uh, bound on this d phi by dxi and then uh, when you take this differentiation this term is less than or equal to 1 1 minus h epsilon is less than or equal to 1 but then the derivative is d square phi by dxi dxj and there is a problem with the dxi dxj but then you have your uh, so maybe you put a constant here and then you will have 
here you will have mod x minus y power alpha. So, this extra singularity here will be taken care of by this one. You see? So, this is for the, here you don't need it, but here this extra singularity coming for the d square phi by dx square, uh, extra singularity here will be taken care of by this thing. You see? That's why, so this uh, alone will not suffice. But if you look at my previous theorem and its proof, instead of d phi by dxi, you got phi here. Instead of d square phi by dxi, dxj, you got d phi by dxi. So the additional term of mod x minus y power alpha was not necessary there because you had a better estimates. So now if you look at it, uh, this one, this is less than or equal to. So if it is phi, you, it gives you something like epsilon square for n greater than or equal to 3. But for uh, d phi by dxi, it can be estimated by epsilon in this interval. Okay. So that epsilon and this epsilon cancel. And this will be of the form epsilon square. Uh, it will have uh, nothing. It will be order. Because near the origin, you have a problem. But that will be cancelled. But away from the origin, away from that epsilon here, uh, you have... Uh, uh, a good estimate uh, and it will be bounded. So you can show that in the earlier case it was phi and d phi by dxi so that it produces some epsilon here and it uh, epsilon square cancel epsilon here d phi by dxi that you got an epsilon there. So look at the proof earlier and uh, now but you don't need here but this gives you this one. This extra things is given here. So, if you do that analysis, if you are not convinced, please do that one. So, it will be some other constant. And then is precisely this norm of f. So, this is constant into some epsilon power alpha. So, basically, you will have a norm f if you want it. So, you can actually get this constant epsilon power alpha into zero to alpha. So, constant. You can derive. But whatever it is, this is basically less than or equal to constant into epsilon power alpha. So, if you want it. So, you, uh, uh, yeah, so that is the constant we already included this constant here. So, so if you, uh, you multiply and divide it, so I actually added here. Okay. So, that's how you get this one. So you take a norm of f at 0 alpha here. So this is it. So this is bounded. So you have the constant are keep on changing that one. So this implies immediately the, uh, this implies uh, ex now it's the same thing. So getting this estimate was the difficult thing. So that implies uh, uh, you are dwi epsilon by dxj converges to uij on compact subsets of omega is a neighborhood uh, com as any combat subsets of omega okay so we already know that wy epsilon convert we know this we already proved last class we already know that wy epsilon converges to dv by dxi all this put together now gives your v is in c2 that's exactly you want it and your d square v by dxi dxj equal to uh so that's it so you can read that one so you have computer here with that this exactly uh, the proof is delicate but end of these conclusions are the similar thing now summing, so if you, uh, how do you uh, solve the problem? Summing, so Laplacian of V equal to summation of UII. Now we look at it. How, what is this summation? This summation, if you look at it UIJ, so you have to sum it only when I equal to J. Right? So when you sum it only when I equal to uh, I, so not this one, where is the definition? Yeah. So, if you sum it UII, 
you see this is only d square phi by dxi dxj that means d square phi by dxi square so that will be laplacian in general you cannot integrate the laplacian uh, uh, because of the singularity under the integral sign but fi minus fx is held continuous so this whole term is locally integrable so you see that one uh, and then you have your this boundary term there okay uh, so you if you sum it you exactly get this term what you get is uh, integral over omega tilde laplacian of phi and x minus y and this is together is locally integrable fi minus fx ty and then you will have your minus f of x and then there also you are summing you get d phi by d nu over omega tilde boundary of omega tilde d sigma y so you see x minus and then this is locally integrable and this is equal to zero so that is zero so your laplacian of v is equal to minus f of x integral d phi by d nu and then take omega tilde is equal to br zero omega tilde equal to br of zero and then this will be on the boundary of br of zero d sigma y and in pde one several times you have seen this is nothing but this average so and this actually one so d sigma y so this is equal to minus f. Okay, so that's it. We got d phi by d nu. Uh, d phi by d nu. You can turn to, to be the modulus of br of zero. Okay, on 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 br of zero. On that, you have done that computation. So it solves the problem. Therefore, the Newtonian potential v solves minus Laplacian of v equal to f. So, okay, the theorem is complete. Theorem is complete. And now we complete the proof of your uh, thing. Now, uh, now you, uh, so you want to solve, to solve, this is our final theorem. To solve minus Laplacian of u equal to f in omega, and u equal to g uh, on the omega, right? Now it's fine. So you have minus Laplace. This boundary condition you do not know. So you write u equal to, you are looking for a solution in this form, implies your Laplacian of w minus Laplacian of w equal to zero, because Laplacian of v equal to f is already taken, then your w should be g minus v, whatever value it gives down the boundary on d omega, this is, and this omega, w exists by per ones now, w exists by per one, that's it, so you see, that's the way you complete the proof, per ones method. So you first solve this equation, use that V and use this G minus V as the boundary value, solve for W. Then you can see that Laplacian of V plus Laplacian of W equal to F and U equal to G because V, V get cancelled. So this is the final theorem and which we will complete here. Final theorem. Let omega be a bounder regular domain you need that right bounder regular domain regular domain with all this uh, last uh, uh, pde1 and pde2 so this is the culmination of the whole theorem regular domain and f be a bounder regular uh, bounder helder continuous function helder continuous function of some order of order alpha zero let alpha less than or equal to one then this problem so let me call this problem 
one has a unique solution. Uniqueness of all seen last is a last PDE one course has a unique solution. The poison the air, then the poison equation this one is the poison equation. It's a unique classical solution. Classical solution. So that's it. So we will stop here and we will continue with something else. And uh, thank you.